The narration begins in Rome, where a team of three CIA officials, including rookie Jack Chen, observes through surveillance an assassin named Fiona Birch, who is wanted in Spain, Brazil, and the United States. She was kidnapped when she was 12 years old. Madam M, her handler, instructs her on where to find the target. When she arrives, one of the bodyguards checks her before she enters the man's well-secured apartment suite. Meanwhile, the CIA is watching what is happening inside the suite. Until one of the CIA officials instructs Jack to buy him a sandwich, there is nothing he can do but follow orders. After having fun with the target, she eliminates him by fracturing his spine with her bare hands. After completing the mission, she leaves the suite, where she is confronted by the bodyguards waiting outside the room. Despite the number of hostels, she manages to neutralize them effortlessly until she reaches her car. As Fiona flees, her car is damaged by a rocket. As the CIA officials run over to pull her out of the wreckage, they are shot and eliminated by Madame M in a limousine, leaving Jack as the sole survivor. Following the tragedy, a girl is seen fighting a boy in a cage. Despite her disadvantages, she manages to be victorious. After the fight, a girl fighter named Catherine is approached by Madame M, who recruits her to become one of the greatest fighters. At the CIA office, it is revealed that young girls around the world have begun disappearing one by one. They all have one thing in common, they are martial artists or athletes, as Jack accurately hypothesizes. After the Rome incident, Madame M took a dozen more girls and trained them to take the place of the dead assassin. These girls are transferred to an island to be trained as professional assassins. Madame M, the head of a clandestine assassination organization, facilitates the training and gives orders to her men if the girls do not follow the rules inside the training camp as a warning, which is witnessed by the other girls. The training camp is hundreds of miles away from the nearest island. Equipped with tightened security day and night, it is impossible to escape. That night before sleep, Charlene Ching and the cage fighter Catherine get to know each other. After their brief talk, one of the girls calls her companions for a meeting. They discuss escaping the island by getting into a boat, which the other girls agree to, including Charlene, but she is prohibited by Catherine, who warns her that she won't make it. Despite the warning, some of the girls muster the courage to escape and manage to flee. The next morning, on the first day of training, they are tasked with pulling their trainer inside the boat. While they are running, they see the lifeless bodies of the girls who attempted to escape. In the following days, they settle into a training routine. Six years later, they continue their advanced training, which includes hand-to-hand -hand combat, using computer systems, studying the human skeletal system to locate its weakest points, learning how to beautify themselves and be good models, using firearms, and strengthening their stamina. One twilight, the girls have a conversation. Catherine feels that they are destined to kill as part of their fate, while Charlene admits she can't do it. However, they know they need to do it to earn a lot of money. As part of their training, they are ordered to eliminate all the hostiles who attack them. To survive, they must use the skills they have learned. Charlene is caught and, to survive, she has to neutralize the enemy. This traumatizes her deeply, prompting Catherine to comfort her. The following night, Charlene narrates her life before she was kidnapped. Catherine also shares her story of life in the boxing ring. Despite their differences, they find they can't be apart from each other. A while later, Madame M arrives and gives the girls an assignment, to eliminate the nearest girl and bring her body outside. Anyone who isn't outside in two minutes will be eliminated. Although the girls are hesitant to follow the orders, they have to do it because there are 10 guys waiting outside with M16S. After that, the girls start to fight each other. To get out alive, they have to knock down their companions and carry them outside. After the assignment, Madame M congratulates the remaining survivors, telling them that these girls are no longer their friends and that only one will survive another day's exercise. She orders the girls to take a rest and prepare for graduation day, knowing that only one will survive. Charlene and Catherine promise that whatever it takes, they won't hurt each other. On judgment day, the girls must pick a random number from a box. Numbers 1 and 2 will face each other in the first fight. The only choice they can make is to choose their weapon. Catherine accepts the fate of being the number 1 player. When the gate opens, Charlene chooses to steal her number to face the number 2 player. The girls begin to fight, using their ability to win the match, and Charlene manages to eliminate her opponent. After winning the first fight, numbers 3 and 4 enter the cage. Despite facing an unfair fight, Charlene remains victorious using her skills. Numbers 5, 6, and 7 must fight against Charlene, 
Now they understand the survival of the fittest and the need to eliminate the weak. Because she was hurt in the previous matches, she has a hard time defeating more opponents. Despite her injuries, Charlene perseveres, pouring out her ability to overcome all trials, and her desire to be victorious prevails. In the final match, before the fight begins, Jing eliminates another girl. Charlene and Catherine have to fight the remaining two girls. After Charlene eliminates her opponent, she helps the struggling Catherine. The final test before graduation is a fight to the death. However, Catherine and Charlene, as friends, can't kill each other. As Jing is ready to eliminate Charlene, Madam M stops the game. Therefore, both are acknowledged as survivors. Only Charlene Ching, Catherine, and Jing survive and graduate. To celebrate, Madam M feeds them all drug-laced beverages. She explains that the girls can make millions of dollars, and after five years, the contract is over. As the drugs take effect, Madam M instructs her guards to deflower the girls, preparing them for what is to come. The three girls are sent on their first assignments. All the victims are either rich and famous or well-known gangsters. The CIA starts to call them by the case name, China Dolls. In Spain, Charlene enters a village as a hired girl, with Catherine as her backup, roaming around outside the walls. As part of her task, Charlene performs an intimate dance. Afterward, during a massage, the gangster snaps out of her modus operandi, confronts her, and calls his bodyguards to eliminate her. She has no choice but to fight and find a place to run. During the intense battle, Catherine arrives just in time to save her. They get stuck in a room, and Catherine comes up with an idea to escape, letting Charlene flee first before blowing up the whole room. While escaping, Charlene is caught by a bodyguard, but Catherine saves her again. At the morgue in Spain, authorities notice that the killing is linked to Madame M's organization. They also discover a suspect's blood sample prompting Jack to conduct a DNA test. He finds out that it matches a mother whose daughter, named Charlene Ching, has been missing. He immediately goes to Hong Kong, where he meets Fei Ching, Charlene's mother. Jack informs her about the DNA test, telling her that her daughter might one of the assassins, and asks for her cooperation, but Fei refuses. During one of her assignments in Hong Kong, Charlene eliminates a target in front of Fei and encounters her long-lost mother. After that, she runs and hides in an ice cream truck. Jack follows and chases Charlene down. There, while freezing, they decide to warm each other, and Jack convinces Charlene that he is a good man. A while later, she knocks him out and flees. Jack waits outside Faye's house, believing Charlene will return to see her mother. However, Jing appears. Believing that she is her daughter, Faye immediately approaches her. Jing attacks Faye. Jack tries to repel her but loses his gun. He attempts to stop Jing, but his cell phone activates, and they engage in a fight. During their battle, Charlene appears. Charlene and Jing engage in an intense battle until Charlene overpowers and eliminates Jing after a fierce struggle. After that, Charlene hugs her mother and apologizes for not protecting her. Charlene and Jack then accompany the wounded Fei to the hospital. Because there was a police encounter, Charlene has to leave, and Jack takes over everything. The next day, Charlene and Catherine talk about the contract prohibiting her from seeing her mother. To reclaim their freedom, Charlene and Catherine accept Madame M's final job. Ryuichi, a Yakuza lord, has hired Madame M to assassinate a traitor in his gang named Kenji. Ryuichi wants the assassination to happen in front of him, but Madame M insists on extra payment for the added work. Ryuichi accepts the offer, and they make a deal. Charlene and Catherine go to the location to fulfill their mission. The assignment turns out to be Ryuichi's plan to avenge his colleague, who was previously slain by one of Madame M's girls, and Kenji doesn't even exist. Ryuichi eliminates Madame M, and as Charlene and Catherine begin to flee, Charlene is hit with a dart containing an aphrodisiac, making her feel warm and inebriated. Charlene manages to escape but Catherine is captured, knowing Charlene will come for her friend. While Jack is in the hospital, Charlene invites him to meet her at the beach. Jack sees Charlene fainting. She feels warm and wants to have fun with Jack, but he comes up with another idea to cool her down. They entertain each other, and the next morning, she leaves a note in his shoe, stating that if they are meant to be, they will meet again. When Charlene comes the next day to rescue Catherine, she watches helplessly behind bulletproof glass as Catherine is tortured and eliminated. 
Charlene, angry and heartbroken, reminisces about the days they were together and the times when Catherine saved her, realizing she was unable to reciprocate in her friend's time of need. An angry Charlene fights Ryuichi. During their intense battle, the two showcase their fighting skills. Ryuichi manages to damage Charlene's eyes until she loses her sight. Despite this, Charlene figures out a way to defeat him. When Ryuichi rushes in, Charlene manages to neutralize him and uses a special technique to defeat and eventually eliminate him. Jack and Faye are at a Chinese temple, praying. Faye jokes that Jack must think the prayers are ridiculous. Jack informs her that, despite never having a religion, he feels at ease whenever he visits the temple. Faye compliments him on his behavior and suggests that he visit the shrine more often. Meanwhile, Charlene is in a different temple, praying for Catherine's soul to rest in peace and telling the deity that she longs to be with the one she genuinely loves, Jack. At the end of the film, Jack asserts that there are times when he is certain that Charlene is with him. The final scene depicts Charlene watching him dash through the crowd, looking for her. For more videos similar to this, don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications. Thank you for watching.